apply some lining to it. This one gives a good sense of volume. Well, it looks good enough in my opinion, I'm not going to be too picky about it. Um, ambient occlusion isn't too strong, so... Um, Probably try bump it up, bumping up the ambient occlusion just a tiny bit, maybe just for a try. Um, there you go. Let's um, try duplicating the cavity map for time. Let's see how it looks. So you start to run into some issues here because the cavity map doesn't look that great here on the terrain. So I'll probably remove this one and simply duplicate the normal ambient occlusion map. And um, yeah, if like er earlier I was talking about rendering out an edge highlight map. Um, we'll start doing that. Then later on, we're gonna see if we can. We need some more tweaking to the texture map before we start uh, importing the whole thing to the engine. So, um, in order to render that in Mudbox, first of all, all you gotta do is go to Map Extraction, Ambient Occlusion Map. And all you gotta do is tweak the filter size. So right here we got a positive value uh, in order to get the negative value and uh, get only the highlights, um, get to only highlight the edges. Um, you just need to use a negative value here. So in this case, we're gonna use a 0 0.000. 000 um, Let's see, one value. So we're gonna gonna give it a try with this um, value on a small resolution. Use fastest, use the fast one method. And this time it's gonna name it edge highlight HO and extract it.
so it'll be basically a black oh there it is uh, seems to be over exaggerated here because the filter size was maybe too small but you can really see that's that's a map that we have a texture map that we haven't seen uh, in um, roll machine earlier so it can still give some interesting effects um, let's see so in this case here it might be a bit too strong maybe because the filter size was too big let's see or actually too small let's go 301 extract So this is the new one, which looks a bit more usable, but we can still tweak it up a bit. Let's get a bit a, low, a higher value in the filter size. On the negative side, of course. Um, so we'll go to zero um, zero five. We'll extract this and we'll probably get smaller edge highlights. nice and subtle. Let's take a look at this. So obviously once you get a higher resolution you'll see much more smaller details here and there and um, and it's it will be subtle detail obvious, uh, of course and uh, but it, it will add a lot to your terrain. Okay now time to run around this map, texture map at the best quality possible again. Alright. Extracting and pausing the video. Okay, it is finally done rendering. Let's bring it into Photoshop and overlay it on our texture map. Obviously, you won't see it from far away, but when you zoom in, you'll see that there's a bunch of some highlights here and there that's going to be displayed on every edge, which will make the rocks a bit more look a bit more hard edged. So, Control A, Control C to select all and copy, and go on top of the let's see. wanted to bump it up a bit and just put it on top of the ambient occlusion maybe and set it to hard light um, let's see it's probably near, really near 
dodge. There you go. And the difference it makes. there let's see with the different blending mode and color dodge what happens if we duplicate the layer to increase the effect maybe use this one as a linear dodge the other one is a color dodge and blend them together. Okay. Let's save this out as a TGA and see how it looks in my box again. texture there we go get some nice highlights here and there makes it look hard edged not just like a uh, simple blob so this kind of texture map that we just generated could be used in any kind of model you're working on. It could be even used on uh, when you're doing some ruins or um, hard edged modeling. If you want to stylize any model, you can use this kind of texture map instead of just painting it by hand. I mean, it could obviously do this by hand and go inside my box, create a new layer, or start and start painting by hand. Um, every detail I want to do but I'm just doing using this procedural method probably do this in another tutorial where I'll just bring it into terrain and start painting every each layer just like in Photoshop because you can blend here as well every layer texture layer just like in Photoshop we could have uh, skipped working on Photoshop and work directly here in Mudbox But we just use Photoshop for this tutorial. As you can see here, I like the way the color is displaying on this one. Now obviously we're using flat lighting. It's not even shaded. So we could probably affect some of the color here, maybe paint it um, the same color here, because I think it looks nice. Or have it blend nicely here as well. Oh well, I'm not going to be too picky anyways, because otherwise it's going gonna, it's gonna to take an eternity to just finish this kind of terrain. Um, I think we're done. Um, the last thing we need to do is um, probably just render the new height map uh, out of Modbox. The one since we modified the heights of the terrain here in Modbox, we added some extra detail, right? Uh, we'll just render, extract the height map, and we will be done. So for since we're gonna use this terrain in a game engine. Oh, uh, the door. I'll be right back, pausing the video. Alright, so um, I was saying that we were about to extract um, this placement map, uh, the height map, for the game engine itself. So we need to think about um, the size of the terrain in the game. You got a choice when you're creating a terrain in Cry Engine, you can choose. Um, let's see, let's run the Quai Engine, that way we can easily see which kind of resolution we can work on. So we have a bunch of possibilities. When creating a new map in the Quai Engine, it will ask you what 
which resolution uh, which resolution your terrain is going to be so we'll choose the one that's going to fit us the most um, in this case we could go for um, 2048 by 2048 um, terrain or we could um, go for uh, 1024 by 1024 which obviously would be the best choice in this case because that's gonna be a one square kilometer terrain since each unit in um, the sandbox uh, equals one meter um, if I'm right um, so a one square kilometer terrain is gonna be a fairly uh, human sized terrain and I think it would be the best choice for this kind of terrain since it isn't that big uh, doesn't it's not that that big when you look at it it's not a four square kilometer terrain obviously you think that going from this point here to that point would be one kilo one kilometer that could be realistic in my opinion so we go to file new we'll just name this level terrain turret test and here we go we got the high map resolution 1024 by 1024 the meters per unit there you go you got the choice you can use one meter per unit if you want so with one meter per unit you'll get around one square kilo uh, one square kilometer terrain press OK let's wait a bit alright we can see the terrain which is here just under the water level okay now here in mod box we're gonna extract the displacement map we're gonna extract one at 1024 by 1024 not the normal map obviously we'll do the normal map as well same time as a displacement map so check the settings first and image size 1024 by 1024 turn off utilizing for displacement map it's not really needed since it's gonna be 16-bit image anyways so it's gonna be TIF format and this one will be for the engine cry engine so it's going to be tut um, to underscore all one underscore height map underscore cry engine so why did we un use an underscore for the cry engine because uh, we're gonna have we're gonna be making one for the UDK later on in a different video uh, for CryEngine uh, because the UD because the UDK uses different sizes now that they implemented the new their new terrain terrain system which is landscape system and 